Welcome to Woodbury Lutheran Church Online. My name is Pastor John Keene, and I am so glad that you are joining us today for online worship. Uh, there's a couple things that I want to invite you to do right away. God has a special message for you today. I believe that. For your family today, I believe that. I hope you do too. I want to invite you to actually invite somebody else to join you for worship today. Our service host is going to put a link in the chat right now. Uh, so you can just click that link and invite a friend or a family member. Maybe they live somewhere else, even in the country. Uh, you can invite them to join you in worship today. I want to invite you to engage in worship. I know that, that many of us are learning what it means to be virtual learners, uh, whether kids or adults, college students. I want to invite you to step into that today to engage in worship. There's a variety of different times when you will be able to engage in worship, whether it's sharing a prayer request, you can hit the live prayer button for that. Uh, giving, there'll be a link in the chat to give generously. Uh, and kids, here's a special one that's going to come for you later on in the worship service, right before Pastor Tom starts his message. Uh, he's going to put a link up on the screen that you can point your camera or tablet, uh, the camera for your phone or tablet up at the screen. Take a shot of the QR code and it will take you to a special Kids Link lesson just for you. Uh, you're going to be equipped today by God and to live out your lives as his disciples. And so I don't want to deter that anymore. We're continuing it in our summer road trip series today. Worship begins right now. Welcome to worship. My name is Dean Donovan, and I'm the campus pastor at our Oak Hill campus of Woodbury Lutheran Church. And it is my joy to welcome you today to worship 
our good and gracious God. We are continuing in our summer sermon series entitled Summer Road Trip, Faith on the Move. And oftentimes on road trips and faith journeys, we have to take a detour. And so today, Pastor Tom is going to share with us what that detour can look like and how to get back on the road again and experience the good things of God. Today, we also are celebrating the Lord's Supper. And so we want to encourage you at this time to set aside those elements. If you have bread and wine in your home, please set those aside and have them ready for our time of celebrating the Lord's Supper together. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first lesson is the gospel for today, taken from John chapter 14. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have not told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Is all creation groaning? Is a new creation coming? It is. is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Yeah. 
is he worthy of this? Our second lesson comes from the book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea. And this book is a very challenging piece of scripture where God calls the prophet Hosea to go and marry a woman who is a prostitute. And so the language that surrounds this account from scripture can be very challenging to us. And so I I invite you to be challenged, to be convicted by these words that the prophet Hosea speaks from the Lord himself. Hosea chapter three. Then the Lord said to me, go and love your wife again, even though she commits adultery with another lover. This will illustrate that the Lord still loves Israel, even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. So I bought her back for 15 pieces of silver and five bushels of barley and a measure of wine. Then I said to her, you must live in my house for many days and stop your prostitution. During this time, you will not have sexual relations with anyone, not even with me. This shows that Israel will go a long time without a king or prince and without sacrifices sacred pillars, priests, or even idols. But afterward, the people will return and devote themselves to the Lord their God and to David's descendant, their king. In the last days, they will tremble in awe of the Lord and of his goodness. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus, remind us how you have redeemed us. What a powerful piece of scripture. And now God invites us to repent, to return to him, to turn our hearts, our lives, our minds, our thinking back to him. And so as we confess our sins, our need for him, I invite you to confess with me in prayer now. Almighty God, we repent that we have too often times sought our own desires, our own will, instead of your goodness and your glory. God, we have sought out the things of this world, the wisdom of this world, instead of your ways and your wisdom. We confess that we have not trusted you as we should the very God who has given us life, and we have been wayward. And so forgive us, almighty God, as we return to you, the one who truly loves us, the one who truly provides for us, the one that truly gives us life. Thank you, almighty God, that your forgiveness is real, it is here, And it is promised to us through the blood and sacrifice of Jesus, our Savior, and the power of his resurrection. Amen. As we sing these amazing words, uh, you are good. We celebrate a good and gracious God who meets us in our need and brings us back into relationship with himself.
time we're going to prepare to receive our offerings. What a gift it is to step into the things of God, to be generous in the things, the, the resources that he has given to us. And so uh, you can see the QR code there. You can point your camera at that and it will take you to the place to give you information to give. Or you can send your uh, offering uh, into uh, Woodbury Lutheran, uh, our Valley Creek campus. Um, at this time, we're gonna celebrate some amazing things that God has done through Woodbury Lutheran Church. Some highlights I'd like to share with you at this time. 
In the summer months, during our summer surventure, June, July, and August, over 300 people gave over 1,100 hours of services, service. 500 plus pounds of veggies were harvested alongside the WLC garden, um, donated them to the Christian cupboard. What an amazing gift that has been. We were able to bless three teachers from Highland Hills Elementary and one retired teacher over the summer with yard work, um, cleaning out gutters, landscaping, 60 feet of fence was built, um, 80 families uh, were blessed at Trinity First Lutheran School through our family fund boxes. Windows washed, toys given, weeding, refreshing, all sorts of things uh, done in the name of Jesus. 220 plus snack bags were made for the Ronald McDonald House. Cleaning and painting and maintenance at Trinity First. Um, continued giving uh, through New Life Family Services. Over 800 diapers were donated. What an impact all of this brings to the community. And it is a joy that we get to continue living out the discipleship path, being generous givers of our tithes and our offerings and our very lives as well. We'll receive our offering at this time. Christians have been using the words of the Apostles' Creed to confess their faith in the triune God since the 4th century AD. That means for 1,600 years, the church across the world has used these words to confess what we believe about our God. Let's say and sing the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Our judge and our defend, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in me. Descended into darkness, he rose in glorious light. Forever seated. I believe in the Holy Spirit 
Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We just confessed uh, through the words of that song, who our God is, what we believe uh, about our great and glorious God, uh, and we get to turn to our God now in prayer, knowing that he hears us. And so I invite you uh, to pray with me. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, uh, Hosea gives us a picture of this, but we recognize it in our own lives as well, of uh, the brokenness that exists in us, in our world uh, and it's so easy to tune it out sometimes or, or, or to just get frustrated by it or, or almost even apathetic uh, to everything that happens. But God, uh, I pray uh, that you would lead us as your people to, to see brokenness and step in by the power of your Holy Spirit. That you would lead us in the midst of the struggles that we face uh, with sin and the darkness in our world. That, that you would lead us to run back to you and your goodness and your light. Uh, Heavenly Father, we, we follow you. Uh, we long for you to lead us, and so we pray that you would show us the way. Open our eyes to see what you have for each and every one of us. Uh, we know, uh, God, uh, that, that some have already returned to school. Some are, are preparing to return to school. We pray that you would give wisdom uh, to those making decisions about school. We pray that you would uh, grant wisdom and health and safety to students and to families, to teachers and staff at school so children will be able to learn and grow in wisdom in the best possible way. God, we know that you work in all circumstances, and so we know uh, that you will work in this one as well. Uh, God, we pray for those who are sick, uh, for those who are, are lonely, for those who are struggling with any other personal ailment, God, we pray that you would intervene by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would bring healing according to your will uh, or give grace uh, to bear to, through this time of affliction. Uh, God, we trust in you. We rest in the, your promise of goodness and forgiveness. We pray that you would unleash your power all the more in us, in our relationships, in our communities, and in your world for your glory. Hear us as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As a forgiven people of God, uh, Jesus invites us to receive his forgiveness and strength in a very unique and special way through the sacrament of Holy Communion. And so if you have bread and wine, I want to invite you to make sure that you have those and those are ready for you and your family to receive communion at this time. I'm going to grab the elements as well. Uh, but we celebrate uh, this meal because Jesus invites us to do that. He promises that something significant and special happens here, that we're not just receiving bread and wine, but that he is present in this meal in his body and blood. And when we come believing that he is here, he meets us with the forgiveness of sins and he strengthens our faith for the journey of life. Uh, and so if that's your belief, I welcome you and, and invite you to receive communion today. If you have not been instructed on communion, I, I want to invite you to refrain from taking communion today. If you have a child in your home or, or if you've never been instructed on taking communion, uh, 
speak a blessing over those individuals in your house or speak a blessing over yourself. You can say something like, Jesus loves you. May he bless and keep you today and always. Uh, But we celebrate. I want to invite you to speak these words of promise that God speaks through Jesus in scriptures over your bread and wine. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so I want to invite you now at this time to take the bread and you can speak these words, take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. And then you'll take the wine and you can speak these words, take and drink the blood of Christ shed for your forgiveness. May this body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen you in faith so that you can serve him with joy. Uh, As we sing this next song together, uh, if you have other people that you're worshiping with, you can commune commune them at this time. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar.
altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to As you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found minutes. Well, kids, we have a special opportunity for you up through fifth grade, somewhere in that kind of age range. If you'd rather step off the sermon and have a teaching uh, that is focused on you, you can take out your device right now, uh, open up the camera and just point it at the screen at that QR code and it will take you exactly where you need to go. Uh, Moms and dads, you can stick around here for our teaching. We're going to be talking about Hosea today. So let's uh, kick it off with a prayer. Father, We're so grateful again to be gathered together in different spaces but with one another, continuing to live out this value that we are better together. And as we near the end of this summer road trip, we've been so blessed to see all different kinds of followers of you, God, just trying to figure it out along the way. And so again today, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be present with us, that we would again Uh, learn and be challenged and also encouraged by the great love that you have for us in your son Jesus. And so as we look at Hosea, uh, open up the scripture to our hearts and minds this day in a way that would honor you and continue to draw us closer to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So when it comes to a road trip, I'm the guy that likes to get to our destination as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And so what that means is there is absolutely no stopping along the way unless there's a great historical marker or a scenic overlook. But we don't stop for unimportant things like eating food and going to the bathroom. You can do those things when we stop for gas every, you know, eight or ten hours or so. And so as the guy that likes to get there as quickly and as efficiently as possible, there are a couple of road signs that I despise. The first, of course, is road construction ahead. But the other is this one, detour. Like, there is nothing worse than when a detour is coming up. I remember a few years ago, we were driving back from Chicago after spending some time with family down there, and we were in the, the middle of Wisconsin, and for some reason... Uh, they thought it would be a good, good thing to do to shut down Interstate 94, like right in the middle of the day, and send us all on this long detour on back roads and in the country. And man, it was so frustrating, so annoying. I had things to do, places to go, and here we were 
uh, on this detour. And the, the truth is, hasn't 2020 felt like one long detour, one thing after another? Uh, I saw this funny meme uh, last week, I think it was, and it was this, it said, if you're a, a pastor who made this declaration that in 2020 God had given you a, a vision for what was to come, um, you better stop and apologize because nobody saw this coming in 2020. Uh, there have been detours in all kinds of ways in our lives. Uh, we've seen detours around school. I think of what, what parents and kids and teachers are dealing with right now. We've had detours in relationships, in sports, in our work. We've seen detours with, with social uh, injustice, racial injustice all around us. Um, just a, a few weeks ago, as I was getting ready to go on vacation, my daughter broke her leg, her tibia, another detour for what was supposed to be. And detours are frustrating. And they make us want to stop and turn around and just get back to where we were, get back on the, the beaten path that we know. And this frustration, it can, it can boil over. And haven't we seen that happening in the culture around us and probably in our own lives and the way that we've dealt with family or things that we've posted online or the, the thoughts that we've had about other, other people. And so detours are hard. But here's the thing about a detour. A detour, it doesn't make travel impossible. It just means you're finding a different route to get there. And it's not always an easier route. It's usually a more complicated, difficult route. And so as we, we come near the end of this series of, of summer road trips that we've been on, uh, we come to a, a huge detour in the life of a man named Hosea. Uh, now Hosea, it says here, holy prophet. He was a, a prophet of God. He, he served the northern kingdom of Israel. And as he served the northern kingdom of Israel, he lived during the same time as Isaiah. Isaiah's got a big old book uh, in the Bible. And God was using prophets during this time to try and call his people Israel back to him. Uh, because they were, they were going after other gods. Uh, they had forgotten their identity as children of God. And so Hosea was one of these prophets that was seeking to call Israel back to God so that he could share his redemptive love and power upon them because that's what God wants to do at, at his heart of his character is, is grace and mercy and love. But Israel didn't want to listen. And so God thought, man, I've, I've got to do something different. I can't just use words anymore. I've got to give a real life illustration that will drive home the point of my people's unfaithfulness and my faithfulness and desire for them to repent and return to me. But that meant a ridiculous detour in the life of Hosea. Uh, so buckle up, okay? I've got a, a scripture that's going to hit you kind of right in the face here. If you think the Bible is kind of boring, you need to be reading it more. Because here's what is said in Hosea 1 verse 2. Two verses into this. God says to Hosea, go and marry a prostitute so that some of her children will be conceived in prostitution. This will illustrate how Israel has acted like a prostitute by turning against the Lord and worshiping other gods. Yeah, you didn't think that was in the Bible, did you? Talk about a detour in the life of Hosea. Hosea, you're not going to go on The Bachelor and find the perfect bride. Hosea, you're not going to have a dream wedding. Instead, I want you to go and find this woman who's working as a lady of the night and make her your own. Amazingly, Hosea does it. And he marries this woman named Gomer. And the Lord blesses them with three children along the way. Children that, that God makes, makes promises to Israel through their names. i got to think about how hard this was for Hosea. Just imagine what, what people were saying around them. 
Here's the prophet of God marrying this woman? Like, are you kidding me? Uh, It reminds me of this great account in the New Testament uh, where Jesus is having dinner with a whole bunch of important religious people, or at least they thought they were important. And as he's having dinner with them, this this woman who's in the same uh, job as, as Gomer comes on in into the room and she she takes out this jar of expensive oil and she anoints Jesus and there are tears in her eyes because she's in the presence of God and she's knowing his his redemptive and restoring and grace-filled power in her life. But the religious people don't get it. And amongst themselves, they're saying, if Jesus is who he says he is, he would know who is touching him and he would get away from her. There had to be some of that going on with Hosea and Gomer. And at at first it looked like this was the perfect story, right? This, This lady of the night finds redemption and restoration by a prophet of God. They have three children. But she keeps running back to her old life. And in her old life, Her unfaithfulness is mirroring the unfaithfulness of the nation of Israel to God. And so the truth is, Hosea's life, it was full of detours. It wasn't just one. It was one after another, after another, after another. And no one would have blamed Hosea if he would have said, I'm out of here. I'm changing the locks on the doors. I'm I'm fighting for custody for for the kids because I'm the the best parent for them. I'm giving up on this. I'm I'm moving on. But his life continued to be full of detours and he continued to be faithful. And then one day Gomer was was gone. (laughs) And she didn't come home. And she went back to her old way of life. And in the midst of that, we we learn that she was brought into slavery. And we don't have the details, all the details around that, but we know it it couldn't be good. And we know that as a a result of how she was living, she was now enslaved by by her sin. And she was enslaved spiritually and emotionally and, and mentally. And that was the state where she was. She was stuck. There was nothing she could do about it. She was powerless. She was in slavery. And Hosea had every right to say, I'm out of here. And yet God comes to Hosea and says these incredible words. Go and love your wife again, even though she commits adultery with another lover. This will illustrate that the Lord still loves Israel even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. These are incredible words of grace. But we need to pause for a moment and understand that these words were spoken to Hosea and we, my friends, are not Hosea. Hosea was given a particular call at a particular time for a particular purpose. In no way is God teaching that we should stay in an abusive relationship where we are in danger. In no way is God saying you shouldn't set up boundaries to protect yourself. Even Jesus says that you can divorce a spouse for unfaithfulness. And so what we have to understand is this this is the road trip. This is the detour that Hosea was called to. We are not all called to the same road trip. And the truth is, in the midst of this, Gomer was meant to represent Israel and Hosea was meant to represent the heart of God. And so we see that as this book unfolds. The unfaithfulness of of Gomer represents the unfaithfulness of Israel and yet Hosea and his love for her and his redemption for her it represents the heart of our God. And so God says 
to Hosea, I, I don't want you just to love Gomer. Like, he could have loved her from a distance, right, and, and forgiven her and moved on with his life. But he says, no, I actually want you to, to redeem her. And what that means is you're going to have to go and buy her back. It's really interesting and sad that in this time in culture, women had, had no rights, and they were really considered property. And so the moment that Gomer was married to Hosea, she belonged to him. She was his, his property. But because of the life she went back to, now she was the slave of someone else. She belonged to somebody else. And so if Hosea wanted her back, he was going to have to buy her back, which meant he was going to have to again sacrifice that he was going to have to give something up, both financially and in terms of his his reputation. I mean, just imagine what people were saying about him after this. This woman who keeps going back to this life, and he he goes after her, and he loves her. Not only that, but then he makes a sacrifice to buy her back. And so here's what, what Hosea does. He buys her back. What a picture of God's grace and love that Hosea would sacrifice so much that Gomer would know that not only was she loved, but she was valued enough that he would say, I want you back in my life so that this whole nation will see how much God loves them. And friends, we we need this picture of grace in our lives because the truth is, we are responsible for many of the detours that we take in life. Like, it's easy for us to say, hey, I'm not like Gomer, but aren't we a lot more like her than, than we care to admit? We have this call from God to follow Jesus with our whole heart, our whole soul, our our whole mind, with everything that we are. We have this call from Jesus where he says, be perfect like my Father in heaven is perfect. And it doesn't take a lot of self-reflection to realize we're not really living up to the standard. I mean, we can't even follow our own rules. And so we, like Gomer, we are enslaved to our sin. We are powerless to break that sin. We are dead in our sin, and there is nothing that we can do in our own strength and power. I am sorry, but not one of us is good enough on our own to bust out of that slavery and death. And so like Hosea went after Gomer, And not only loved her, but sacrificially redeemed her. So Jesus, Jesus comes after us with that same intensity of of love and forgiveness and mercy seeking to transform us through repentance that we would know the redemption that he has won for us, that he has bought us back. And we read about it in Ephesians chapter 2. I love these words from the Apostle Paul. He says, once you were dead, because of your disobedience and your many sins, uh, the last time I checked, when you're dead, you can't do anything. You are completely powerless. You can do nothing. There is no choosing. There's no deciding. There's no doing anything because you're dead. And so Paul says, this is your circumstance Because of your disobedience and your many sins, whether you are Gomer or Mother Teresa, this is your lot in life. But God, but God, but God is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. When he raised Christ from the dead, it is only by God's grace, only by God's grace, that you have been saved. Is it not incredible how God comes after us with such vigor and sacrifice and love? 
that he would transform us from our death because of our sins and instead give us life. And so like Gomer, Jesus redeems our stories like she was redeemed by Hosea. Jesus redeems our stories to show his amazing love. And not just to us personally and privately, but so that the whole world would see. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And now it's through us as individuals that the world sees how love, the love of Christ transforms in ways that they too can find redemption for all those detours in life that we've taken. So friends, we've been on this summer road trip for a whole bunch of weeks now. And as we've traveled on this summer road trip, we've seen broken people just like us, imperfect people just like us, trying to, to figure out what it looks like to follow, to follow God. And it is not always easy. And we've seen all kinds of, of detours, but in the midst of those detours, what we've seen is that God is at work, that God is faithful even when we are unfaithful, that God is with us as we travel. And one of the things that we all need, one of the things that we all need is, is we need a compass. We need a, a true north star to lead us in the right direction. And so it is, is so fitting that as we get near the end of this series that we would come to these words from Jesus in John 14. Where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. You know, I, I can't tell you what the rest of 2020 is going to be like. I can't tell you if you're going to avoid those personal detours that you bring upon yourself. I can't tell you if you're going to avoid the detours that the brokenness of this world brings to us. But what I can tell you is that in the midst of all of that, there's a better way. There's a better way, and Jesus is that way. And Jesus doesn't want us to miss the true life that he has given to us. He doesn't want to get stuck in that detour that leads us away from him for all eternity. And so what does he do? He sends his son Jesus. He sends his son Jesus to show us the way. And I got to tell you, Jesus is coming. He is coming again. And when he comes again, he's not coming again to this world to sweep us away to some la-la spiritual land where we float in the sky. But he is coming again to bring the new heaven and the new earth, to bring the new order where there is no more suffering, no more sin, no more tears, no more death. But instead the old is gone and the new has come as he makes all things new. And he clearly says, I am the way to get there. And so in the midst of the detour, see the beauty. I was annoyed by that detour we had to take in Wisconsin. But I got to tell you, we saw some beautiful farmland. We saw some beautiful animals and, and barns. And I even remember a helicopter that was flying around putting up some of those high wire electric lines. Right? There's, there's beauty in the detour when you're following Jesus. And so today, Jesus says, cling to me. You can trust me. Follow me. I know Hosea gave up some silver to redeem Gomer. But I gave up my blood I let my body be sacrificed. And then I rose back to life that you could know redemption from your sin. That that detour would no longer define you. But that my trip to the cross would. 
So friends, receive that invitation. Know the love that God has shown to you in Jesus. Receive it. Step into it. Live it. That like the nation of Israel, the people of the world would know the faithfulness of our God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the love and redemption that you have given to us in your son Jesus. May we now follow that direction, the Jesus way, all the days of our lives. To your glory we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm so glad uh, that you joined us for worship today. I pray that you stayed engaged. God equipped you by the power of his Holy Spirit. He promises that in his word. And so uh, I want to encourage you to take it deeper this week, uh, to dive even further into this message from Hosea that you heard Pastor Tom share with us just a moment ago. Uh, You can point your phone or your tablet's camera at the screen right now and get our scripture card uh, that will allow you to dive deeper into this message from Hosea. That's also available on our website and on the WLC app. Uh, I want to invite you to a couple things that are coming up as well. This week, Tuesday, September 1st at 7 p.m., you can go to live.woodburylutheran.org and we will have an all-campus, all-church, Woodbury Lutheran Church Town Hall. Uh, We'll talk about what the future looks like. You'll be able to ask your questions and interact uh, with staff and leaders from Woodbury Lutheran, so don't miss that. Uh, And then next weekend is Labor Day weekend. All of our worship services will be online only. So there's no outdoor or in-person gathering. It will all be online, but God still works to unite us and teach us and equip us by his power. We've all just experienced that, and we get to experience that next weekend as well. Uh, As we move further into the fall, Uh, we'll be sharing more information with you on our website through email about what worship will look like at Woodbury Lutheran. So be watching for that. Uh, But you've been engaged. You've been equipped. Now God empowers you. He sends you out. He has given you his Holy Spirit so that you can live as disciples of Jesus every single day this week. Uh, And so I want to send you with the blessing of God. Treasure this as God's gift to you by his Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We'll see you next week. Behold the Father's heart Mystery he lavishes on us As deep cries out to deep Oh how desperately he wants us The things of earth stand next to him Like a candle to the sun
The Spirit breathing holy fire within My ever-present help Speaking truth when I can't find it Light up this broken heart Light my way Until my time on earth is done Jesus is my soul desire for this very 